There are several people who ask this question, um, and so I'll put this together. Uh, people have been following what you've warned about in terms of depopulation and the collapse of living standards leading to the spread of, potential spread of epidemics and pandemic disease. Uh, would you say that this is what we're seeing now possibly with the swine flu, or is this just an attempt to change the subject? Well, it's, it has many features to it, some of which are uncertain but are big question marks which we have to answer. We don't have the full answers for it. Here you have a policy which is coming from the British monarchy and from Prince Philip, whose policy has been to reduce the world's population to less than two billion people. That's the World Wildlife Fund policy. That's the green policy. Therefore, the green policy is to reduce the world's population. How do you reduce the world's population in large amounts for rapidly? Famine and epidemic disease. Lack of sanitation, famine, and epidemic disease. Now, we, what you're getting is, is you get the economic preconditions, the physical economic preconditions for a global or quasi-global pandemic conditions exist. They exist for reasons of the economic policy which the United States is still content defending under this president today. So the guilt for this is shared by the current U.S. government because they bought into blame because they did nothing to resist it. When anyone knows that when you take a population like the world population now, you take the conditions of life in Mexico which were imposed by the United States and Britain huh? back in 1983, 82, 83, on Lopez Patillo. Everything that's happened to promote these conditions in Mexico today is a result of what continuation of what was done to President Lopez Patillo of Mexico and his Mexico in 1982. There's the genesis of the conditions for genocide. If you look at the conditions today, they're much worse. The spread of the drug academic, epidemic is also a factor. And the problem is that given these factors and the natural effect of these kinds of conditions we're creating economically by current economic policy create the potential for a real global pandemic. And we have to not say maybe it's only this. We don't say that. We say we have all the ignition material here for a global pandemic. Now, do we say it's going to be a global pandemic? No. Do we say it has the potential of becoming a global pandemic? Yes. Therefore, we act to prevent it from being a global pandemic. We assume the worst and hope for the best. But we have to work for the best, not just hope for it. Uh, so there also is another aspect to this, which some people will bring up, for which there is no, presently no proof known to me. That is, from my experience with certain sections of the British government and the U.S. government from the past, there are people in powerful positions who would like to help Prince Philip out as the way LSD was synthesized by the British, who will use chemical, physical chemical capabilities, biological chem uh, capabilities, to help disease in the laboratory by synthesizing types of viral and other diseases or combinations of them which will interact to reduce the world's population, which is the policy of the environmentalist, is mass murder. And mass murder, as Bertrand Russell prescribed and as Prince Philip has prescribed with his World Wildlife Fund, their intention is to bring this about. And whether this is a byproduct of their intention to be filthy on economic policy or social policy, or whether they're adding a little something to make it really happen, I don't know. 
But I'm going to operate on the assumption, knowing them, since a crime is being committed in the neighborhood, I have, a, I have this you know, evidence of the crime, I'm going to assume they're doing it deliberately. And I'm going to act to defend the world's population on the assumption that, that they might be doing this deliberately. Even if I don't know they're doing it deliberately, I know they're doing it deliberately because their intention is that, of that nature. Their intention is to reduce the world's population through a greeny policy, through an environmentalist policy advocated by Al Gore and Prince Philip, the British monarchy. Their intention is genocide. And they have the capability at their, at their fingertips of the kind of scientific technology capable of producing such genocide. So I'm going to act, since we're in a war against them, I don't know whether they're doing it or not, but I know they're determined to do it. It's like in wartime, so-called secret weapons, as in World War II. You're out to win a war. You have the capability of producing certain kinds of weapons against the adversary, the target. You have the capability of doing it. If you're sufficiently evil and sufficiently eager, you will attempt to do it. And if you attempt to do it and you have the capability, you might succeed. So I think you have to treat this swine flu thing with that point of view. Don't panic. Don't panic. Do whatever you should do and do it now. But keep your mind open. You might have a real something in there that you have to deal with. You might have a synthetic disease or a combination of diseases of a certain form which would have a combined effect because of the history of the populations which will take certain selective effects. The tendency will be, in general, to go at the susceptibilities of different kinds of populations and use a, a weapon of that type against a population which is tailored, or the type that's tailored for that population. But it could be more general. And the swine flu threat is such what we're getting is effects now. I say, you mobilize for the for the, in, in the contingency that the fire is going to spread. You don't wait until the fire spreads. You know there's a danger it could spread. Now you mobilize now to defend humanity against that danger. If it turns out to be you didn't wasn't that bad, fine. But you wouldn't want to be in the position where you underestimated the threat. The consequences of those that you wouldn't want to be responsible for. So I say. We mobilize. We mobilize rationally. We assume the possibility of the worst, and we fight it. We fight it because we should have a firefighting capability against this kind of thing anyway. 